Welcome back to Love is Kimes, the recap show of Love is Blind. It was the reunion, which is why me and my co-host, David Dennis Jr., are dressed in our finest attire. Mm -hmm. We didn't get the memo from Sarah Ann that she was dressed like uh, I did going to the bomb back in 2000 or 1999. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah Ann. Are we in a position to critique the fashion of the uh, people attending the reunion? Absolutely. Absolutely. We can give it to him. I'm I'm wearing uh, the finest of the Kenneth Tux collection <laughs> because he decided to treat this uh, yeah. like a like a very classy um, thing. There was a lot of there was a lot of interesting looks, uh, great looks <laughs> from some. Um, AD was bucky naked um, there. You can yeah. see the uh, the little yeah, the covers. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a that was a move. Uh, I like that. Chelsea <laughs> looked like prime 1980s wcw uh professional wrestler uh <laughs> with the attire <laughs> she, she looked kind of like uh like an ice skater but like one who knows she's gonna lose so she's going all out with the <laughs> amy looked good little jessica rabbit little good yeah, um yeah. almost everybody was there honestly there were yeah. no conspicuous absences we also got a lot of a love is blind success stories mm. uh in attendance we will talk about them jess was there on the couch as if she were one of the couples on, on the show they were just like they didn't even they didn't even do, do like a she didn't make it they didn't she, she was like just walked in like she was part of the cast even though she was on as much as sarah ann <laughs> the People often ask, you, like, why do they have the gold goblets? And I believe this mm. to be true. It's for continuity purposes, so you can't see how much people are drinking, how much alcohol is mm. being consumed. Um, this is the first time I have ever used my gold goblet to serve that same function. Uh, there we go. Hey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's 8 p.m. Let's go. When they showed the old couples before, we, okay, we're, we're here. We're going to break down everything yeah, that happened. Yeah. We're going to talk about who won, who lost. I'm going to do a final power ranking, which is actually mm. really difficult. I want to ask you what you thought of like the reunion as a whole, like the the way, because it was long. It uh, was yeah, an yeah. hour and a half. Yeah. It was live, meaning like a live release, which you know what? I appreciate Netflix. Don't don't try to do yeah, it live don't again. Screw the servers. No, yeah. you, know, you don't need that. Um, I was worried when they showed all the old couples that it was going to be like a lot of filler. Yeah. But I will say this, David, like I think they kept it pretty tight um, with the couples. It didn't feel like, generally, it didn't feel like there was too much filler. Even uh, our biggest concern, which is that too much of the arena would be devoted to Johnny. And <laughs> Actually, they gave, nope. there was a there was like a 22 second video montage of the past year of their lives and i it i was like somebody reading like a noam chomsky book to me in 0.5 speed i felt like i was going to pass out i could not believe that i had to sit through that 25 seconds of their boring <laughs> happy loving lies i could not care less vanessa said you have a funky and fun relationship <laughs> <laughs> and then they immediately started talking about laundry that's what yeah. she was like. Your relationship's fun. She was like, he does laundry and I do dishes. And I was like, shoot me in the <laughs> eye right now. I hate everything about this. <laughs> they, they had never even had a fight. They right. said, have you ever had a fight? Oh, we've had disagreements, but we just talk it out. Uh, the only like thing that's worth noting with them, they look very happy. We like them. Caveat, yes. caveat, caveat. <laughs> We're yes. not slandering them. <laughs> they, they definitely belong together. Um, the only thing that was interesting was that they, she did ask, I think it, I don't know if it came from Vanessa or it came from Nick or the viewer. They they sort of used the couples as a way of asking questions. Yeah. They asked Johnny, like, do you not understand how condoms work? He kind of didn't answer the question. Did not I don't answer. Know, did, I don't know. They did not. I still do not know, like, the biological functioning of how these two people bump uglies on a get on a given time. I don't know how they do it. I don't know if they know how they do it. She was like patting him on the leg. It was like, yeah, I had to explain to him a lot of stuff. But he gave the some explain like what. I don't know what he he gave some sort of like pseudo feminist like <laughs> explanation like I as a man I don't really think that's not true buddy like men do th like not to the extent but fellas you know do have to consider like condoms and things like that and birth control as yeah, part of this I mean, whole situation like what are we talking about what have you been doing before this like how has this been how have you been doing this before this moment. That was, that was my question. It remains unanswered. <laughs> I thought she teased, they teased a big announcement at the beginning. Yeah. Um, spoiler alert. It's just that some of them are on perfect match. Right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> get to that. Right. But I thought it was going to be that Johnny and Amy, Amy were pregnant, which would be funny because yeah. it would raise the question of whether or not they ever figured it out, but they're not yeah. pregnant. So something tells me they figured it out. Yeah, they're like, um, big announcement. 
four people on this panel are losers. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what they did. Okay. Uh, and we're the people who watch Perfect Match. So right. Like us. right. Um, okay. Okay. So let's just get right to it. Yeah, they start with the, the biggest mess of the messes, mm -hmm. which is, of course, Laura, Jeremy, and Sarah Ann, mm -hmm. or as I like to call them, the love triangle of sadness, because <laughs> I am team no one when it comes right. to this, this trio. Jeremy comes out. He looks, mm. I think he looks pretty good. Mm. Um, immediately, they ask him, are you seeing someone? Mm. He says, we've actually been dating for a year. We live mm -hmm. together. In comes Sarah Ann. You probably have the perfect analogy for what her appearance was, was like. Because I suspected something from the world of pro wrestling. Did you wish we didn't already know from TikTok that they were together? Because imagine the TV moment if we didn't know. I yeah, I, well, I kind of didn't know. I still did not know the level of togetherness right. that they were. You know what I'm saying? Like she was in this place and they were doing a thing. I was still a little shocked that she like they were like coupled and like they showed up and gave a little kid living together like they are booed up uh, except for with chelsea you know they seem to be have their own little tumultuous thing going on um jeremy was like engaged twice in the last year so there that might cause some issues there was a lot of jokes being made about him keeping his location on and things like that but i was a little you know, yeah, it would have been a huge shock if we had known. It, it would, only thing would have been better is if she, like, rode onto set in a jet ski. Like, that would have been the only thing that would have made it more perfect. <laughs> Gee, um, I think so. I, it was a pretty tough appearance for Sarah Ann, who mm -hmm. I think kind of – her and Jeremy came out on the uh, loser side yeah, of yeah. this whole affair. And I say this is someone who really does not like seeing Laura on my television. <laughs> I am not a fan of this woman. <laughs> Um, it was very obvious that both the people on stage mm. were on her side mm. and also that the show was on her side. Yeah. The way that Vanessa and Nick handled this. Was, I didn't know if she would show up. They brought her in via Zoom. Brittany yeah. had a great reaction to that. I think at one point, it, uh, Jess was kind of jumping in on it. They were all kind of yeah, yeah. jumping on it yeah. and ganging up on Sarah Ann. And I'm not saying that to ex exonerate Sarah Ann and Jeremy. They yeah. are terrible people. Right. <laughs> but um, – it was very obvious that sides had been drawn over mm. the last year since this ended. The group chats, and that the group chats had been established, and no friends, no, no friends. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I don't. Yeah, you know, Laura ended up begrudgingly coming out better because just you know she was just defending her. Like the, my ninety six year old grandmother was on the plane. Like you know, like it. She she was ready for it. She she knew that there was some redemption. I wish that somebody would have pressed her. But like, hey, you were being like kind of a, a D-bag to this dude the whole time. Like nobody asked her about that. Like nobody said, hey, your whole family was like, why are yes. you treating this dude like this? Did your 96-year-old grandmother see how you were treating this dude? Like nobody asked that. This is why I wish you and I were hosting the reunion <laughs> because the timeline was of the uh, the affair, the night of the location sharing incident mm -hmm. was shared and it was the same day. Yeah. Yeah. That he met her family the same day that the aforementioned family was like, yo, stop being an a-hole to yeah. your significant other. So, again, I'm not saying that to say Jeremy was innocent. He is not. That dude lied. Yeah. He is clearly. Uh, he he oh. accidentally lied, I think is what he said. He said he accidentally told a lie He's about where a he doofus. was. Yes. He is a doofus. And Sarah Ann is a clown so i want yes. to be clear but laura <laughs> painting this picture of we were eight you know always checking in and i loved mm. him and we were going to get married we saw you treat him like crap and I, I i was actually a little annoyed that that wasn't brought up by anyone because she was making such a uh, aggressive case yeah. for them staying together yeah because I, I can't like i you know at least they could have told us that hey there was an edit that was here that made her look like it only caught us in these moments because i can't yeah. imagine them having a conversation where she says i'm 80 percent down to you know i could see him saying what are we and she being like i'm three percent because you like wow your toes look funny i don't know what she would have said but it would have been something I, there was no moment of tenderness between them at all and I, yeah i'm with you it's somebody should have brought it up 
So the other thing that I really took away, other than the cast turning on Sarah Ann and Jeremy hard, and I, I wrote down a lot of this stuff, they all got mad at her. Like, yeah. uh, I, Flora said, I think they're both disgusting. I just, this, <laughs> this woman, come on, you guys, the, she's not, not great. But right. uh, Chelsea uh, alluded to the fact that Sarah Ann unfollowed them all or yeah. some, something like that. Uh, Jess called her a pick me girl. Like, uh, you know, the ganging up was happening. Yeah. But the other thing that I really took away from, again, this 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 part of the show was how defensive Nick and Vanessa were <laughs> of the show. The sanctity of the show. They went full like Gloria Mantooth is a saint over the fact that she was like, this is entertaining. And they were just like losing their mind. Like I, we've seen them be upset at different people. Like they gave Shake a tough time and all that stuff. Like they've yeah. been upset. This was about as furious I've seen them because somebody was like, how dare you treat this reality show where you meet people getting married after eight weeks like it's entertainment. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to find love. Ah, bah, bah, bah. Like, whoa, what? Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, sir. Yeah, right. This is the once in a lifetime opportunity to find love. Until you can catch four of them on perfect right. match. <laughs> right. <six months. laughs> Please. Right. Um, yeah, like there were the, the thing about I guess Sarah Ann, I, I had missed this, put out a video where she was Sarah Ann. The problem with Sarah Ann is that mm. she's kind of a she's a doofus. Yeah. I think I call him a doofus. She's a doofus too. And she's tr she was like trying to wear the villain role a little bit, but she just doesn't yeah. have what it takes. So, you know, she she had a couple of lines prepared and yeah. and then I guess she made this video where she was like, It's entertainment, baby. You know, so <laughs> she just she can't pull it off. <laughs> Laura to her credit pulls off her lines. Yeah. And um Vanessa and Nick were really insulted by the video. Uh, is it entertainment or is it real? And at one point, Sarah Ann said, well, you know, they, we all had a lot of really like intense conversations. They weren't shown. And Vanessa was like, we didn't air them because he didn't pick you. And everyone was like, Yo! <laughs> How? What? <laughs> they were so upset. They were like, you said here, it's entertainment. Roll the film. And it's just her being like, it's entertainment. They said it verbatim before rolling the film. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand why they were so why they were so bad. They were just so mad. This it was ridiculous. So I guess my takeaway from the whole thing is I don't think Jeremy and Laura were ever going to end up together. Right. Um, I guess you know Sarah Ann and Jeremy probably had a better connection than any yeah. of us knew. They're yeah. still together in real life. Um, what like Jeremy lied? Mm -hmm. He treated Laura terribly. I'm not saying mm -hmm. just because she was mean to him that she deserved to be, if not actually cheated on, emotionally cheated on or right. whatever. Uh -huh. um, and I don't. And while I don't think Sarah Ann, I, I actually, you and I talked about this the last few weeks. I think both of agree us agreed that Sarah Ann was like she. She thought of this as a reality. She was looking at this as like a real world timeline and yeah, felt yeah. it was within her right. And they did yeah. air. By the way, I want to address this that the scene where she talked to Laura. Yeah, I thought that was going to be ugly. She came off pretty well in that. I mean, what, how did you perceive that? Uh, well, she was kind of like wishy-washy. She was like, oh, I didn't mean to do this. I sort of didn't yeah. mean to do it. And then like, I, but I did. And I'm so sorry. She at least apologized. Laura actually came, actually was like, after doing all that steel toe or like open toe shoes, had no energy uh, for Sarah Ann the whole time. And the conversation would have been like, I would have been like, oh, this is a very nice sort of closure moment. A little awkward. Nice closure moment, if not for the fact that 10 minutes later, she got in a jet ski with Jeremy and rode around. <laughs> like, yeah, we can't great. talk about it without talking about that part of it. This is the thing. None of these, I don't believe any of these three are people I would want to know. Yeah. That's where I come down. I think in actions, Sarah Ann and Jeremy the worst. But functionally, uh, who would I least like to be sat next to on a plane? It's Laura. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <It's> Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't. Jeremy would just kind of be quiet on the plane, and like Sarah Ann would just be, I don't know, like watching Newsmax and mind her business. Laura would be like, Excuse me, I ordered a gin tonic, <laughs> not a vodka tonic. Okay. Somebody in the comments will be mad about that. Uh, let's get to Trevor. This was brutal. Uh, Trevor's back. Oh, the mullet's this was back. Rough. This was a rough uh, watch. <laughs> they read the text out loud, which is good. They which is, oh my God, this was excruciating that Nick and Vanessa like read like dialogued the text message and read it at while it was it was like five minutes of great. them reading great great, te was, great television it so. was incredible credit to the show that was 
so smart from a right. production standpoint. And also credit to Nick and Vanessa. I thought they handled this well. Yes. Uh, so Trevor basically glitches. He's yeah. like, I, I, I had, because he knew this was coming. They were going to address yeah. the test. He, he knew he was being brought on to do this. By the way, he looked terrible too. And they're yeah. speaking of bad fans. And he totally, he just glitches and he loses it. What was your make of, what did you take away from like his response, his visceral response to being put on the spot? I, so at first I was like, the glitch is part of the act. I thought the glitch was the act, but the glitch lasted so long. He just sat there for so long and AD chimed in. She was like, say it with your chest. And then the crowd is like all into it. And now he's just like freaking out even more. And like his like Dockers pants and shirt combination. That was just like, why, what are you doing? He just looked, he looked like, right. Wow, he looked sweat. like they, he was at like a hotel room and they were like walk through the door and he ended up on set like he had, it was like he had no clue that this was happening it was weird it was a really weird thing and they were actually kind of light on him because i think of the weirdness of it because there were a lot more questions that i want to know about and like that they just yes. didn't didn't go with because i just felt like they just was like this dude is just like freaking out on us right now yeah he was also accused of uh the uh his ex said oh he threatened to leak the yeah, yeah. uh, images like that is the actual mm -hmm. actually bad thing is being yeah. accused of i mean the show stuff is the show and right. whatever but that 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 was not brought up he kind of gestured towards the truth uh -huh. but it's like so crappy that he couldn't say it right which is the truth isn't that he was in love with this woman and wanted to marry her mm -hmm. and was just using the show for fame or whatever and plan to go back with her and be with her the truth is he was lying to the original woman yeah yeah clearly yeah, yeah right like yeah it's not like he had this great love and he was faking it for the show he was faking it maybe for the show i don't know but like the truth is he treated the original woman like crap and then yeah. he, the texts were full of crap and he kind of sort of admitted that without admitting it and i yeah. think he just handled it terribly. I don't know what he was planning to say. At one point, he was like, you guys trust Johnny. Johnny knew that I was a dope rock <laughs> on the show. And Johnny's yeah. like, yeah, I don't know him. <laughs> but, like, um, Johnny was like, I don't want no part to this at all. And Jess was like, Chelsea's been raked over the coals. What does that have to, that has nothing to do with Trevor, by the way. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. Whatever weird. The only person who I feel like you alluded to AD who's gotten away with getting involved in other people's stuff mm. has been AD. Like, she, yeah. her own life, we'll get to that. But... I don't know. I, I if look, I don't want to defend Trevor because I I think he was what I say is bad. Yeah. And I and if the the threats are real, that's really bad too. But by the end of this, I was like, yeah, I hope, just get him off the stage. This is brutal. Yeah, this, it was bad. It was hard to watch. It was bad. The dude is like, he just got caught. He just got caught doing. He just got yes. caught being crappy to everybody. I do. Th I do think that like, if he had, you know baby probably did love chelsea and they would have probably you know they but there would have been the text the text message would have still come out this woman would have been like yo this dude was texting me um when he got there like it, there was no way this was not going to come out i don't know why he thought it it wouldn't yeah. but like it's it's done it's done for this dude it's done well, well i think if there's anything too he's guilty of other than again the serious thing the way he talked to the woman like mm. I can't wait to marry you or whatever. It was like, so right, it was, yeah. he was kind of like love bombing her. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminded me of how he was talking to Chelsea. So yeah. he's kind of a guy who knows how to be the nice guy and say yeah. what women want. And that sucks. Yeah. And he clearly, you know, that's very crappy behavior. Yeah. This, I, I think they were right to end it when they did, because it felt like he was going to burst into tears. I will say though, Chelsea cannot rewrite this history. Chelsea can't be up in here and be like, I knew something was wrong with this dude. Oh, yes. Like something yes. was like off and it was my intuition. No, no, no. We're still not buying it. I'm buying the fact that you wanted to win somebody over Jess who, you know, you think is really hot. End of story. AD and Clay were next. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get to the question that made me I said a photo chart, but there's a lot of things that happened. Let, I want you to, let's revisit what Clay said. Mm -hmm. He comes out. So weeks go have gone by. So mm -hmm. she has, Vanessa's asking, you know, what happened after weeks went by before they talked. And then Clay gives this answer. Talk about Trevor planning. And to me, it sounded like he really had, you know, he stood in front of the mirror, practiced it a bunch. Yeah. And yeah. then he, he says, she's honestly the love of my life. I made mm -hmm. a mistake. She's the love of my life. 
therapy, 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 <laughs> therapy, 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 therapy. <laughs> what was your reaction before we get to 80 to Clay's uh, account? Okay, it's tough, man. I, like Clay, there were parts where Clay's talking where I felt like this dude is not on a reality show. Like this dude is like working through some real stuff. And then, of course, there's what you're saying is like there's the there's this like rehearsed going to therapy. I've done the work. I've worked on myself. Da da da. And then he's sitting next to this woman to be like, "Yeah, I made a mistake." I do think he genuinely immediately felt like he made a mistake, right? Yes, I do. And I do think he he watched the video was like, "Man, I really screwed up." But like to look at this woman, be like, yeah, I still love her. I want to marry her and all that stuff. Not cool, dude. You know, like that's not a a, a a cool thing. It doesn't feel good. And I feel like that may be a conversation that you guys should maybe have. Um, this is my before. question. Because this is this is my yeah. question, because it feels like there's a lot of there's missing pieces here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, again, Nick and Vanessa did not ask the question that I wanted to ask, which is, OK, you say she's the love of your life. Have you expressed anything close to this yeah. over the last year have you spent significant time together over the last yeah. year have you you know directly like i don't know communicated any of these issues? because if not then it feels like he saw the reaction on the internet saw how much love she's getting saw the way people perceived him and is sort of responding to that i don't know how genuine it is because I don't like, there's still a lot of blanks. Like it's been a year and I cannot yeah. stress enough. So for him to say this now, I just have questions and I don't really know. Yeah. I felt like Nick and Vanessa were kind of like, oh, this dude's talking like some black <laughs> stuff. I don't, I don't even want, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> they were just like, sure, whatever. And they were like, yeah. there were some he things. brought up could, some stuff. Yeah. Brought the stuff with his dad, brought the stuff about black fathers, black men, which are all valid things. But I feel like, it, but I feel like that that Nick and Vanessa were like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to touch that. When there are some questions that could be asked, like, "Yo, Clay, do you cheat on people a lot? Like, why did you feel like you were going to cheat on this woman? Like, what is, the, how is this stuff that you've talked about with your parents actually shown up in previous relationships? Because we have not really heard that, you know. And then, like, what, like, what were you actually going to do for AD? Like, what, what have you, what do you have to offer AD a year later? That you did yeah. not were not going to offer her because he still was talking about she builds me up she does all this and AD was like you know we we have a lot to discuss about AD but AD was very much like I you know I was going to do everything for you I was going to be like what like there was still no discussion about what kind of partner he was to her and like th your therapist I even tried two therapists okay like cool like the second therapist first therapist somebody should have been like yo what are you going to actually provide for like the partners in your life. And Nick and Vanessa were just kind of like, oh, this is getting too deep. Let's move on. When he was talking about, you know, his father and, and mm. black fathers and, and I was like, did he read David's article? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Uh, check it out on landscape.com. It was excellent. Yeah, I was alternating between like, this is fake versus yeah. like genuine emotion from him. Like, I really believe he felt bad. I, and he said, I don't want to be a bad guy. Like, I believe yeah. him. I believe that he, the things he was saying about his father, who, it, by the way, was very obvious, still has not apologized. Yeah, still has not apologized. Uh, yeah. But terrible, he was defending terrible. his dad. He was kind of like defending his dad. Defending was, him. Yeah, defend him. Yeah. And I actually didn't mind. Like, I, I, I that to me all felt real. Mm. Whether or not he actually wants to be with AD or is prepared to is an open question. That is, he's, uh, certainly exacerbate a fact that we saw a TikTok from college girls <laughs> saying they saw him at a college bar like 20 right. weeks ago. I mean, I don't know if you know that he was a uh, he was a world class college athlete. I don't know if that's been expressed. Like, uh, you know, the, the rock star life, you know. <laughs> I'm like, sir, you're 30, right? right? And you ran track. No offense. <laughs> to my, Shout it's not out like to he the was like. A one and done at Duke. Like right. He was like a 400 runner. Right. I, mean, I, don't, know what, I don't know what kind of lives, you know. <laughs> you know, all the ladies, okay. the tour buses when you're, when, you're, <laughs> when you're running the 400. You never know. By the way, his dad almost got in the Olympics, by the way. What? We should, we should wow. mention that. Yes. Surprised that didn't come up. Uh, okay. So, uh, he, he, so he does the love of my life thing. And I'm like, what? Right. And then. I think it was Vanessa who says, it's a good question. Would you date him again? Uh -huh. AD. AD folded. Absolutely folded. <laughs> just just fell, fell apart and folded immediately. They had like, AD, stand up. Stand up. No. Do something. We knew, we, she, 
if anything, by the way, we have questions about whether Clay has grown from this. Does not appear that AD has. Let's 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 hold her accountable a little bit yeah. for like you we I remember that you and I were like so like, oh my god, I hope she learns she, her, she knows her know your worth, sister. Right. Like yeah. stand, <laughs> stand on business. Nope. No, because she she there's another thing that comes comes up later that uh, is along I, the same thing. Okay, yeah, all right, <laughs> we'll get to that. But when she asks her, "Would you date him again?" she's like, <laughs> and I right. was like "Oh God, you're lost <laughs> in the song. It's over. It's over. It's over." They went to Applebee's that night, <laughs> and it was up. Like you can't tell me no different that AD and Clay <laughs> were getting it on that night. I do have questions about, well, again, I want to know if they did in the meantime. Part of me thinks yes, honestly, mm -hmm. yeah. but I don't think they seriously dated. I think there's probably just some on and off stuff. Yeah. I don't dislike these people the way I <laughs> viscerally dislike the love triangle of sadness, but I do feel like they are exactly the same in a lot of ways. Yeah. We're just rooting for them uh, to like both of them to like be better. Jeremy, Sarah Ann and Laura are just like irredeemable human beings who, you know, have nothing to offer. Uh, speaking of irredeemable human beings who have nothing to offer, uh, we get to the other love triangle. It's mm. not really, it's such a fake love triangle. Yeah. Is that like a isosceles? I, I don't know much about geometry. Um, it's uh, it's like this. And then Jess is over here. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so Chelsea, okay, because they show Johnny and Amy. Right? Mm. So uh, <laughs> Someone, I think this was it, it introduced to it via audience question. Someone asks Chelsea about the conversation that Jess and Laura, which I'm actually glad this was brought up. Yeah, the conversation yeah, Jess and yeah. Laura had about uh, wh whether Jess still has something with Jimmy and Ch Chelsea is mad about it. Or she was like, it was disrespectful. And mm. Jess does a full, Jess who has, is just very, someone who like, it seems like she's been on television for 50 yeah, years. Yeah. That's my, she's just like bravoed out and the way she talks yeah. and the way she handles. So she's like, I was so bad, you know, or she apologizes for it. Fine. And she's like, Sarah Ann, she, when she was talking, she's like, Sarah Ann, I'll let you finish and have your moment. And I just want to bring it back around. It's like, what, did you go to like class for this? Like, did you go to like reality <laughs> TV, like school? Did you get a PhD in reality TV? Like, how are you communicating like this? I don't understand it. <laughs> so true. <laughs> um, we'll get to, yeah. So uh, somebody asked Jimmy about his friend mm -hmm. and he is like, yeah, it was messed up. Like he's mm. upset about it. He pretty much the same line of explanation he had on the show. That when I say the friend, the friend who, for those who've forgotten, Chelsea in a drunken fight revealed that Jimmy had slept with a female friend. He said that was told you that in confidence. You and I talked about that and whether it deserved to be told in confidence, mm. given the emotional impact it would have on Chelsea. And I actually thought like she kind of brought that up, which is like yeah. this caused feelings for me. And you can kind of and I think you actually did make a good point, which is like, actually make a good point, right? She actually made a good point, mm -hmm. which is, yeah, like if I wasn't able to say why I'm upset, I would look insane. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I get that. My big takeaway though, from when they brought that up was everybody was really soft on Chelsea and kind of defending her. Yeah. And this is sort of a recurring theme through the reunion. I texted you this, which is, I feel like there's a very strong girl group of friends chelsea jess ad laura uh -huh. and that's sort of influencing the way a lot of these conversations are going yeah well because you know what when they brought up the conversation between laura and jess i was like man laura was kind of messed up in that conversation you know like because jess was like do you think you'd want to see me and laura was like yeah go like go meet the guy yeah. like he would want to see and i'm like that's kind of a messed up thing to do right like that like that's your home girl that she's engaged you were mad at Sarah Ann for like have crack, you know, talking about cracking the door open. You kind of cracked the door open for Jess and there, but I just think like you're in a group chat, you know, Jess calls, Jess's child calls Chelsea, auntie, auntie Chelsea, you know, like they like right. love each other and all that stuff. Wow. So I guess, you know, sometimes you're in those little group chats, you just like let bygones be bygones. <laughs> you kind of do passive aggressive things. You may hate each other, but you just kind of like let it go. Uh, I think group chats are ruining reality TV shows. Like let people just like, you know, yeah. It, too it. much stuff is being worked out. Yeah, these, yeah. Uh, for a season that was so um, dominated by Chelsea's insecurities and mm -hmm. her fights with Jimmy about it, there wasn't that much conversation about it beyond yeah. that one um, a conversation I alluded to about the friend. In fact, 
they spent more time on Jimmy and Jess than Jimmy and Chelsea. Yeah. This show is also really cognizant of who's getting killed online. You know, like, so they yeah. sort of know, like, all right, Chelsea's getting destroyed online. And a lot of some of, you know, a, a lot of that stuff is like, sort of the unwarranted stuff like you know you say you look like megan fox and it's hilarious because you don't but then there's like people who go to another level of like her looks and all this stuff that like is a you know bullying and all that stuff so people are super cognizant of that and they don't want to feed into those things anymore so i think they just kind of like moved on let ad defend her and say like she was just like they were you know got a bad edit or whatever when like yeah. mm, I don't know because she some of the things she said like you know the Megan Fox thing just slipped out no it didn't it ain't slip out you manufactured that conversation yes. and like fed it to that man in a smorgasbord of lies about how you look and like but you got to sit. No that. one called her out on it yeah. like when she was like I and I've had fun and I've been you know they were everyone was like wow good for you girl yeah. like if I was the host I would have said. Okay, but don't you think you were manipulating the process by bringing it up? Yeah. Like that yeah. is literally yeah. everybody's react. All, to a man, every person I talk to who watches this show and watch that moment where we're like, oh, she's she's being sneaky. Yeah, and, and there was so much talk about it. There was so much throughout the season about Clay being like, what do you look like? Da, da, da. Like she was manipulating it in the same way and that did yeah. not come up. I do think to your point, like the show and how they're responsive to online reaction they also kind of picked their stars and it yeah. was very like if I mean, all you have to do is look at the follows the stars yeah. of this season are ad and jess that's why yeah. jess was on the stage even yeah. though she wasn't in a relationship <laughs> she's come out of this with the most instagram followers she was given a lot of screen time she was given i think more time to argue with jimmy than like johnny and amy had yeah. the entire yeah. episode yeah. Which, yeah. I'm not complaining ken and Brittany talk for like 42 seconds like what's going on i know <laughs> i <laughs> They might be the only people who who I came out not like disliking. Yeah, they had they were we'll they get, we didn't hear from them until an audience question. Like, what are we doing? I know, Brittany was like, I'm sure. "All right, um, okay." But first, just uh, they ask her about the conversation with Jimmy, and she basically confirms what you and I suspected, which is she wasn't actually feeling him yeah, once yeah, she got yeah. out of the pause. And they ask him about seeing her photo because we, the audience, never got to see that moment. Alas, because right. in the. <laughs> Jeremy was like, I don't know, I just showed him. I just kind of found Jeremy funny. They're like, yeah, we were friends. And she's like, or so I thought. Yeah. <laughs> and she brings up this interview yeah. where he... David, I actually... This felt like a Chelsea argument where I was having yeah. trouble understanding like what she was so mad. Like it was like, She was like litigating details about their final date and how he reacted and... I guess him saying that she left after 10 minutes when it was much longer and then they two, really it, show footage. It was yeah. two and a half hours. <laughs> like it was, it was, that was kind of funny. It was but, as but, long as Dune 2, how long they were talking. And she, she said it was 10 minutes. I do appreciate the show, like with the receipts yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, we'll get to the Matthew part. But I, I, she, I felt like she was kind of trifling, honestly. This whole interaction, I, I was... She, she it, again, she was very Bravo ish mm. of like, this is my moment, and you know, we're gonna do this. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't find it that interesting. It felt like just, I don't know, picking nits to me. So, this, this is what it was interesting to me about it was that I actually kind of, it, what was interesting was that we saw this side of Jimmy where he's not the most like rational communicating person in the conversation like we've always seen him in comparison to chelsea who's just like ah and he's just like you know what are you talking about and then when he's with jess who communicates yeah. this very reality show like rehearsed way he ain't know what to do with it he had no clue what to do with it. i thought the the argument was a little nitpicky but also like he did say it was 10 minutes and it was yeah. like a two and a half hour conversation but he'd always he was already saying that stuff about Jess before during the show, he was like, she was being rude to me. She was being like, you know, right. you know, not, you know, not sort of give me what I wanted, it, which I didn't think she was being rude to him. She was just pressing him about like the relationship, but I couldn't help but wa watching that, but think like, this is a dude who was treating this woman. Like he has somebody finer waiting on him. I like that mm. only confirmed to me that like this dude 
was treating Jess like she was, you know, just to be cr- like the ugly one. You know what I'm saying? Like he was treating Jess like yeah. he had like this beautiful woman waiting on him and like, I'm just tolerating you. And as soon as she, like if he, if Jess had said that she looked like Megan Fox, he would have put up with all that <laughs> But he just kept on being, you know, but he was just treating her like I got some better over here. And that like that whole way that he was talking to her just made, just affirmed that for me. I think you're right. And probably hints at things he said to Chelsea or ways he treated her that drove or exacerbated the insecurity that we didn't really see, perhaps, yeah. which isn't to say that they were protecting Jimmy or anything like that. But like, he might not be the best. Yeah. And yeah. you're best at dealing with women. And again, when you consider the fact that all of these women are now friends and no. don't. You know, like there's a different kind of alliance. They don't, it, 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 I, she even defended Chelsea in talking to him. Yeah. You know, I, you kind of get a clearer picture of how, why things unfolded the way they did. Ultimately, she came out fine. I, yeah. I just didn't really like find their interaction to be that interesting. I was like, I don't know. I don't really need to hear about you guys rehashing the minutia of these dates that happened yeah. a year ago um or her she was like and then he praised he said i got a good edit and that was an edit i was being really me and i was like i don't care i don't yeah let's go you know get to Brittany in there everybody had been wanting the jimmy jess thing all season yeah. and we never really got like we never really got this moment that we thought we were going to get where he sure. just like fell over for her but we got to get the jess content in which we will season two a perfect match. It's coming. <laughs> oh man, she's already spoiled that though. Um, okay, right. <laughs> so then we, we do finally get to um, uh, Brittany and Kenneth, as you mentioned. Alexa, I think, was the one who asked them a question about their abstinence, which like not something that anyone cares about, but we know that they're super religious. Uh, and then Nick asks about the phone. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, Kenneth. Uh, says it's because he's a principal yeah. and he just loves his job and he's just dedicated. What did you make of his explanation? Did you buy it? It was the one I knew he was going to, I knew that was coming. Yeah. We talked about it earlier. I yeah. knew he was going to say, I'm a principal. I got to do this. I love my job. I love this. I'm a 25 year old, like prodigy principal, Urkel dude. Who, like one on Instagram, he was like a regular teacher, like two years ago. Like I need to understand this upward mm. mobility. Is he like the Patrick Mahomes of like teaching? Like, how did you go from like teaching like sixth grade science or whatever to being a principal at the age of 25? I need to, I need to understand how this is happening. But yeah, I figured that was, that was going to be the case. He's like, I'm on, uh, you know, but he was so dedicated to his job that he took like three weeks off with no phone or, and just left the school to like be run by some other person. So whatever. <laughs> Maybe they taped it during the summer. I don't know. I don't- um, <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 I thought ultimately in the grand scheme of things, he came off pretty well because, and I think it was also like putting it in the context of all of these other horrible dudes yeah, by yeah. the time they, he in some ways benefited from going last because by the time they got to them and they were like, and Kenneth was right. on his phone and you're <laughs> yeah. like, eh, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, right. and he's like, I just love my kids too much. Um, the, the thing that <laughs> truly, um, Coach Carter over there. Doesn't it feel like twenty five year old principal though? Like it feels like a like an ABC show or something. We're on. Yeah, like it's to gonna the, be. They just put him on Abbott Elementary. And just call it. <laughs> just call it. Get he could probably get a cameo. You know. All right. You think it's Morgan um, Freeman and Lean on Me? Like what? Like what? Tell me. Tell me what kind of school this is, dude. Like what, like. What, what, okay. What's going on? If we have any teachers in the comments, please speculate as to how this could have happened or explain it to us. Administrators as well, welcome to. <laughs> I do want to hit one more thing from this interaction. Uh, which uh, was Brittany saying they talk every day. Yeah, they're they're besties now. They're just like uh, have a good chemistry, which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> but uh, but I w- I will say that I was a little disappointed that nobody brought up. Yo, AD asked you about this like white yeah. girl thing, and you just mm-hmm. kind of like we never never yes. talked about it. they just like joked about dolphins which like okay whatever but uh yeah, yeah. it was uh like you and i we had a lot we talked a lot like race was a big component of this yeah. relationship it was something that made the show interesting nope i yeah maybe they just thought making the nest of weren't equipped to hit that which 
there. <laughs> which, yeah, yeah, which like uh, get some different hosts. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, commenters, please add Netflix. Right. Hashtag uh, love is kind's host. I don't know. We gotta come up with something. We start hearing from all the old cat. I, there's not mm. really that much to bring up. I, uh, Matt and Colleen, who were a couple, I did not like at all yeah. during that season. I will say I did like that. Matt's the first thing out of his mouth was praising Colleen for her work. Uh, yeah, she's in a ballet. I, that actually made me like him more than I think I ever did. Um, okay, so then we get to um, the Matt and Amber footage. I mm. really want to know what you think of this because, you know, they're like, you people have been wondering, why didn't we show the footage of yeah. Matt Matthew with Amber? And like, did he really say the same thing to her that he said to AD? Roll it back. This is a big theme of this reunion. Yeah. So they roll it back. They do the whole like <laughs> side by side. Here's what he's saying to Amber. Here's what he's saying to AD. Here's, you've got AD being like, oh, oh, you know, right. in the corner. Yeah. And I'm like, eh. Not really. What did yeah, you think? I was waiting. I was waiting for like the like they made it sound like it was verbatim. They made it sound yes. like he was saying the same thing to each of them verbatim. It just sounded like a dude who was like like two women in the pod and was trying to yes. like figure this thing out. You know, like it was it uh, it. I mean, I'm yes, yes, being deceitful, like saying you know I, I I'm kind of picking you kind of thing. But it wasn't like he was like I left that whole that first episode way back when thinking that yeah. this dude like told ad i want to leave with you now and then told amber i want to leave with you now and to basically he was saying like i want to ask your dad for your hand in marriage which is something that i think like you kind of do if you want to marry somebody you know like though that just yeah it didn't feel there wasn't a smoking gun that i thought it was going to be despite ad's like yeah. you know yeah. reactions in the corner and and okay okay, okay. <laughs> yeah so so, so the, she's like ad what do you think it sounded the same AD said, I mean, you heard it. Yeah, obviously. And she's like, maybe it didn't sound exactly the same, but like how it felt or whatever. And they're like, did you see, well, did you see him again? She might as well put on a clown nose to answer that question <laughs> after saying that because she said yes. Yeah. And then she said they went on a second date. Oh, AD. AD. I like her so AD. much separate of the relationships she seems cool she's probably one of the actually like the only funny and i would like to sit next to her on her plane but i would not like to be her friend and sit next to her on her plane and hear her complain about men <laughs> because it's you're you are walking straight into those doors you know and on the on the poster like how this whole show got started those i sent you the poster of the love is blind and under ad's it was like why does this always yeah. keep like i always have these things in my past or whatever uh hello you know like this you went on two dates with this dude and then she was like yeah he's kind of cute i went to this potential like serial killer's house and he made me rice and beans or whatever and just like hung out with him and it kind of fizzled out like what do you like every every you know mom knows of a character that we thought was fictional named Boo Boo the Fool. And AD has become <laughs> like, she looked like Boo Boo the Fool trying to explain to me why she is still going out with two dates with Matthew after all of this stuff that he's, cause she had not even seen the footage before. Like she was under the impression that this dude said yes. verbatim the same thing to her and Amber. And she went on two dates with this dude. Like, what are, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, and, I'm, and I know Clay was sitting there like, are you, are you serious? Like, are we serious right now? Like, everybody's giving me a hard time. And you go, you went on two dates with this dude. Like, what do we do? You didn't answer my text message for weeks. And you went on dates with Dexter slash Matt. Like, what are you doing? I was going to say, I feel like AD could find out that the guy she's with is a serial killer and has murdered 10 women. And she'd be like, at least they're not alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hide. She is the epitome of um snooze from SZA, like I'll hide the body for you. Like that is AD, like she took that song to heart and I need her to like read a different book, listen to somebody else, watch Waiting to Exhale, do something to like help you free yourself from these terrible situations, <laughs> do something. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, what's a sports comp for AD? I was gonna say she's a little bit like a Falcons fan, where she's like, "This year is gonna be different." <laughs> we got Kirk Cousins. 
That's exactly it. That is exactly oh, it. And you I were up. Like her and I like them. You were up twenty eight to three on being loved by America, and you blew it by going on two dates with Matt. She's no, she didn't blow it. They still love people love her. I I was kind of tapping into the internet sentiment a little bit to see if people agree with me. Uh, to some extent they do. To some extent they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but she remains incredibly popular uh which you know again i like her so um i'm just saying we just we just want better for her that's all it is we want better for I her actually, that's all it is i we talk talking about the perfect match reveal i would like to see her on perfect match not because it's what's good for her but i want to mm. see where the bar is <laughs> <laughs> I would just, <laughs> yeah who like where, where are you not going like like oh my god it's oh. Fl- flavor of love season six i want to be on that like what like where are we going ad oh, oh you got a single man in the basement right. <laughs> oh she is the definition of that okay um so wrapping things up we see your favorite squawky chelsea <laughs> Who now, Chelsea now works for Love is Blind. I had a visceral reaction to seeing Kwame again. Every time he was on the screen, <laughs> I watched him again. And his his lineup looks a little bit better. Like his lineup, he did look like they were lining him up with like a sport. So it looks like <laughs> he's got like some sort of like reasonable barber this time. Because the haircut that Kwame had was one of the most stressful moments of that show. But they look, <laughs> Chelsea had like, she was, she was shining. She was like, he had, you know, he had the, the chest out as per usual. They look good. They look happy. They like actually look way happier than I thought they would. Like they do. midway through, through that, that season. Then they show uh, Micah and Izzy and they're like, Te- this is teasing the reveal. And I was so worried the reveal was going to be that they were together. <laughs> right. You all. right. I like- thought they were, I thought they were just together. I was like, wait, when did this happen? Yeah. I was so confused. Yeah. And I was like, that to me would be a reveal almost on par with the Bartice baby reveal of Aziz's reunion that oh. no one wanted. Not a soul on earth wanted to hear about Bartice's baby. Um, but it was not that they're together, although we'll see what happens. They both went on the show yeah. Perfect Match. Jess is on Perfect Match. Trevor is on Perfect Match, but they did not mention that after what happened. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and then uh, speaking of visceral reactions, uh, Vanessa at the end mm-hmm. uh, shouted out the OGs and then said original gangsters, at which point my husband- With a hard A. Was... With a hard A at the end of gangsters. <laughs> at which point my husband from the kitchen made went so loud. <laughs> What's he even watching? Um, and then they did they did the toast. Dave, before we get to the power rankings, I do have one final question, which is how do you feel Vanessa and Nick did? Because they've gotten a lot, Vanessa in particular has got a lot of criticism in the past. Set aside our very naked aspirations to take their jobs. Right. <laughs> how do you feel that they did? I feel like uh, Doc Rivers um, giving an assessment of the Bucks coach uh, because I definitely want that job. So... Uh, <laughs> So I think this was like, this was their best season. I think, you know, like their mm. best performance, still not great. great. This was their best, the best job they did there. Somebody told them like, you got to press people. So they were pressing on Jeremy and pressing on Sarah Ann and all that stuff as much as they, as they could. Sure. Um, it was the best season. They still like left a lot in the tank. It felt, it never felt like they had their own genuine questions. Like it just felt like yeah. they were asking questions that the people like fed to them that they read the internet. They it didn't like when you watch like Married at First Sight, right? Like the therapists are like they mm. come and visit and they hang out with the couples and they spend time. So that like when you come to the reunion, they can sort of offer some feedback on like how things progress and all that stuff. But Jessica and Nick like weren't around. They just watched on on TV and mm. then they like came they don't know these people. They don't yes, know what they did. saw. Yes. They just felt like sure. people just like jumped in and just like were watching like we were. And so, yeah. like, I think I, if there's anything, there could be like a little half episode where like Nick takes the guys out and Vanessa takes the. the they the, used like, to be a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, involved. a little bit more. And yeah. they just like go back to Hawaii and like hang out. Mm. And, you know, but it was fine. They had their toast around Love is Blind. They were trolling us. You saw all the food. <laughs> Oh, that big old, <laughs> that big old lazy Susan of food was that was out there. Like uh, it looked like uh, when they imagined the dinner and hook, and they were just like all this food <laughs> on the table, and they were just like sitting there, and they were just like, okay, we get it, they're eating, it's great. 
Uh, is this Vanessa Rufio? Right. This, uh, <laughs> um, childhood crush. <laughs> um, yeah, I. It wasn't the. It wasn't the worst. It certainly was. There was one season I can't remember that was. Oh, the live season. I think the live was season. The was, live. That, yeah. yeah, that was that yeah, was brutal. That was a rough watch. Um, because she kept going after like Paul. You yeah. remember that? Yeah, and letting yeah. Mike up. Well, yeah. This wasn't that. She. It was largely fine. I think some questions were left on the table that you and I wanted to hear mm. discussed. Um, but ultimately, not that bad. So, yeah. fine. Good job. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You guys right. did okay. I, I, guess. Do, I did not yeah, plan my power rankings. So okay. All right. These Let's do it. On the spot. I'm like Stephen A doing his A list. I guess the A list is planned. Okay. So we're doing everyone who was at the reunion. Oh, okay. Okay. Who we're, do you think? We're still I'm putting Kwame's, Kwame's hairline at the bottom. Oh, I, no. We're not doing the, we're not doing the, <laughs> uh, the OGs. The original okay. gangsters. Um, okay. All right. Number one, I'm going to say Brittany. Yeah. All right, there we go. That was our my girl. Yeah. went pretty wall to wall. Number one, she did great showing, start to finish. Did nothing to detract from that. Had a couple, like one weird joke, but like for the most part, the there most innocuous human uh, acquitted herself admirably. I felt. All right, number two, Johnny and Amy. Sure. Yeah, I, I that if you'd have told me that that montage of them their past year was 37 minutes long i would have believed you because i felt like <laughs> I, felt, I could not believe we were watching they're this. lovely they're, i'm glad they're together they belong together yes they they are they seem happy i still don't know how they're having sex but <laughs> congrats to them she said we figured it Can out I... she, said, she just said we figured it out <laughs> like i don't know i have some jokes that i can't make <laughs> on an espn platform about what that means so Thanks you later. Um, this might surprise you, but I'm actually I'm bumping up our man Kenneth. Okay, I think I'm he, with it. he got a redemption edit. He looked good. Him and Brittany are still friends. They actually yeah. had a conversation about how they can, you know, when they start dating again. I guess the, it's kind of weird that they both haven't dated since so it's been a year. But yeah. in any case, we know he's, he's busy. A busy man. He's a principal man. He's he's on his phone. He's got he's got kids to take care of. You know, you know. all things considered, I feel like not a terrible showing for him. Okay. Mm. Okay, I'll go here. Her here. I'll put Jess at four. She she got what she came for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm actually have a surprise uh person I would put a, a like right there for a little bit above Jess. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see when we get to this person. Uh, I maybe. Am I wrong? Uh oh! <laughs> <laughs> People are gonna like this. Uh, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I just feel like <laughs> <laughs> he came out of this with the softest possible landing. Yeah, and he now knows he can. Get with AD anytime you want. <laughs> no, he, can, he looked at AD and said, "I can get that whenever, whenever I need." Um, uh, so I'll yeah. put her next. I'll put her next. Okay. Ooh, ooh. No, she wouldn't have two dates with Matt. Man, come on! <laughs> like, what are, what are we doing? This is. But think about who we're picking from. I want to. I, mean. I want to put her lower just to inspire her to to do better in life. <laughs> just just so she sees this and be like, "What am I doing wrong?" Let Bullet, me go. Bulletin board material. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we got the terrible threesome left. We got both terrible. We got we got Jimmy, we got Trevor. I put Jimmy next because I find him the oh, least okay. objectionable. Is there okay. someone in this remaining group that you actually thought was when you were talking when you were like somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Somebody, yeah. The thing about Jimmy, the, Jimmy was hilarious because he was so pissed at Jeremy. You could tell like he yeah. was really pissed when Jeremy was like. Yeah. Weird. Jimmy's gonna look the worst, and like whatever he said to him in the pod about like, uh, you know, you're the villain now. Like Jimmy was was really upset about that, but you know, it's all good. I'll put Chelsea next. Okay, maybe this let's is talk about what's... Chelsea. Okay, yeah, I feel like Chelsea is right below Kenneth. Like for just for the for for this for the reunion, she was fine in the reunion. Like there was nothing really like, you know, they they made a they everybody sort of defended her. They made a good argument about why it was kind of not the best that Jimmy brought the, you know, the woman on there. She was a good sport about the Megan Fox, even though that was not at all what happened. 
Yeah, she came out okay. Like she came out okay. She did come out okay. And yes. I think yes, I think uh the she public was, will rally behind yeah, her. Absolutely. She was dressed like Rick the Model Martel. She looked uh <laughs> like some of my favorite wrestlers of yore. So like I'm with it. <laughs> okay, before we get to the end, I'm gonna go uh Laura, Sarah Ann, Jeremy. Yeah. They're interchangeable. It, they could eat, they could all be at the bottom. I would probably put Sarah Ann at the at the lowest because like I don't know. Where was she on January 6th? I don't know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, as a rule, if a man cheats, it's on the man, <laughs> not the women. So <laughs> that's me uh, just showing where I stand in okay, life. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> generally. But I do not like any of these people. Absolutely. I want to be very clear. And then I got to say, coming in at 12. Oof. Yeah, Trevor, he lost the reunion. That what was a this may be the, the worst like turnaround Final of anybody in Love is Blind history in terms of like where <laughs> they started in the season to where they ended up in the reunion. Is he like the Eagles of the This, might, this might be this might be yeah, like he lost his last like eight was, games or whatever. Yeah, like the defense just stopped yeah. or forgot how to tackle at the end cuz yeah. there was a point where he was dominating and it, this was it was actually hard to talk about this show with anyone who wasn't caught up because yeah. I remember I was I think it was my brother and I were texting or no it was a friend of mine who uh, yeah, my friend Adam he was like, "Oh man, Trevor, what a mensch." And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's what a what a turnaround, man! What a heel turn! This is like if we were talking wrestling. This is a heel turn for the ages. You get everybody on mm. your side. You turn around. You you hit Hulk Hogan over the head with the chair, and now you're the most hated person in Love Is Blind. Mm. So, which do you think when they do this season again, and they bring back the older couples? I assume Johnny and Amy will be together mm. forever. Yeah, <laughs> somehow not procreating do you think <laughs> we didn't do the yes or no bit mm. will ad and clay be on oh my god over with them i would i i actually would not mind ad and or clay on perfect match like give me those give me them on perfect match uh separate i, I just see ad going into the like the little decision thing and just like picking every single person that pops up and being like giving everybody a chance and then, like, the guy bringing her into the room and, like, picking his ex. And, I, like, imagine AD being sent home four times and coming back and being <laughs> like, it's okay. I forgive you. I can't. I can't. Well, David, it's been an incredible season. What a ride. Thank you so much yeah. to Charlie and Brian. Help us make this show. Thank you to everybody who's been watching. The audience has been steadily growing. I have enjoyed so many of your comments. You guys are true Love is Blind fans. Um, rocking with us from start <laughs> to the end. Rocking, uh, rocking the with, OGs. With the OGs. Rocking with the team. Uh, and yeah, if you guys have any, by the way, if you're watching this and you liked it and you have any suggestions for shows, mm -hmm. things generally that you would like us to cover, um, this has been so much fun and a welcome break for me from watching, um, you know, cut ups of, uh, guard footage <laughs> in the draft. So I wanted to give a toast to all of you and to David in particular for joining me on this journey. Uh, and I think we can all conclude that love is definitely not blind. No, definitely not blind. Thanks for inviting me. This is like one of the most fun things I've done. The messages, I've gotten the most kind messages of my career from people who just watch this and just like <laughs> get so much enjoyment from it. It's just like, this is incredible. You <laughs> just see these all heartfelt Amazing. messages about how much they enjoy just hanging out with us. So yeah, let's let's keep let's keep the keep it going. Let's watch some some more fun stuff. So. Farewell.